G'day Legends, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be talking about off-grid power uh, and how it works basically because there is a big difference between power at home versus power in a caravan. So we're going to go straight back to the basics. Uh, at home, your power points, your GPOs or your wall outlets, whatever you call them, in Australia they operate on 240 volts, 10 amps at 50 hertz. So that is an AC voltage. Uh, you would have heard the terms AC and DC. Not just the legendary Australian band, but AC and DC stands for alternating current and direct current. So your home power, when you're connected to mains power, is AC voltage. When you come away in the caravan, unless you are connected to, a, to mains power through an extension cable on the outside of the caravan, you are reliant on the van's batteries. Typically, in most vans, that's going to be a 12 volt battery which is a DC voltage, so very different to alternating current. This is direct current. Some vans will have 24 volts or 48 volt systems. It's not as common. It's typically a 12 volt system, but you can have multiple 12 volt batteries in parallel to extend to your capacity. So for example, we've got two 105 amp hour uh, 12 volt batteries, which gives us 210 amp hours of 12 volts. Uh, if you were to put them into series, that's how you could uh, get yourself a 24 volt system. Two 12 volt batteries in series gives you 24 volts. But if your van is running on 12 volts, you don't want that. They need to be in parallel. But an auto spark, you will wire it in like that for you anyway. Uh, so when you are running off grid, you don't have connection to mains power. You're reliant on 12 volts. A lot of the stuff in your caravan will run on that 12 volts without a problem. So your lights, your TV, your water pumps, um, the ignition for your um, stoves and stuff like that if you've got a gas stove all that can run on 12 volts you might have 12 volt sockets where you can plug a usb in or whatever that can all run fine but you'll find that the power points on the walls your aircon and your microwave stuff like that will not run on 12 volts they typically need a 240 volt ac uh, connection which again you'd get by running the lead out from the caravan to a power source a lot of people do apparently not know that, so they come away and they're wondering why their, their microwave doesn't work. It's because it's plugged into a power point. None of those power points are going to work when you're off grid. The way around that is you actually need a device called an inverter. What the inverter does it is it converts the 12 volts DC voltage to a 240 volt AC supply. Uh, the best ones to get are a pure sine wave. They're a much cleaner supply and a lot of, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? like precision electronics, say like sleep apnea machines or things like that, they, and even laptop power supplies maybe, don't really like a dirty AC supply. They want a nice clean one. So a pure sine wave inverter is definitely the way to go. Um, we personally have a 3000 watt inverter. Um, so we could run nearly everything in our van if we wanted to, uh, but we don't really have the battery and the solar to cover that. So uh, we, just use it for charging laptops, running the washing machine, etc. Uh, let's take another step back a little bit. So 12 volts batteries, obviously you know batteries need charging. There's a few ways that you can do that. Uh, the most common one is the solar panels. So we'll have solar panels say on the roof of the caravan. You can have solar panels that come out and fold out and you just plug in. Or you can have solar blankets. Uh, each have their own special uses. Solar blankets are very light and flexible. The portable solar panels are quite large and bulky, but they're a bit more efficient than a solar blanket. Uh, and But you can angle them towards the sun, where the solar panels that are fixed to the roof of the van are great, but you can't angle them, so they're sort of reliant on which angle the sun is hitting them. So that's one way of charging your batteries, is through solar panels, through a regulator to drop it down to 12 volts, because typically they'll provide 18 to 24, sometimes 36 volts. Um, so you have to have a regulator which will drop it down to the 12 volts. Uh, some, like us, is built into our battery management system. Others would have to have that separately. Um, another way of charging is if you are connected to, I'm going to call it shore power, mains power, um, your battery management system will use that 240 volts that you've got to charge your 12 volt battery. Uh, and then the other option is while you're driving, you can have like DC to DC chargers running off your alternator. So when you're driving, you're providing a charge voltage which is typically higher than the 12 volts, up at like the 14, 14 and a half volts, you are providing that 10 volts to the um, batteries while you're driving, so it's charging as well. 
Uh, a lot of modern battery management systems now will be able to blend, so it will take not only what you're providing from the car, but also what you're getting from the solar panels while you're driving as well. Combined effort, you can really charge up those batteries quite nicely on a driving day. Okay, so now we know how we're charging the batteries, uh, we sort of need to figure out how much you're going to use. Now, the Lifestyle Pioneers did do a fantastic off-grid series uh, where they went into this in a lot of depth uh, and it's very fascinating to watch. I'm going to keep it very simple for the sake of this video, uh, but basically every device that you've got should tell you on it basically how much current it will draw. It might say 5 amps, for example. So what that is telling you is it will draw 5 amps per hour every hour that it's on. Um, so with that you can then calculate your battery capacity. So, so like I said, we've got 210 amp hours. Uh, if I just roll that down to 200 for simple maths, if I was using something that was during 5 amps per hour every hour for the 200, uh, what's that, 20 hours? Let's do that math quickly. My apologies, 40, didn't double it. Uh, so yeah, we could operate that 5 amp device for 40 hours without charging those batteries. Uh, there is a difference between lithium and AGM, but that, that's the example anyway. Um, a lot of the devices don't need to run for that long, obviously. Um, so that, like your water pumps, ours pull about 5 amps, but they're only on for 10-15 like seconds at a time. So they didn't actually take 5 amps out of your battery in that time. You could, you could divide it all from the hour down to the 15 seconds to figure out how much you use, but the best way to do that is either have a good battery management system that can tell you, or download the, uh, oh sorry, install a shunt and get an app or panel or whatever for that shunt that can then tell you um, what you've just used basically. So we use a Victron shunt, um, so I've just got the app that I can overlay in here. Um, basically it shows me what voltage we've got, how much we're using. Uh, it calculates automatically how much we're using versus how much supply we're getting from the solar panels, so it can then tell me we are in positive or we are in negative, whether we're using more than we're getting or if we're getting more than we're using, you get the idea. Um, and then it gives you a time remaining at the bottom as well. So you can calculate at this current rate um, of discharge, you've got 16 hours left or whatever. Um, so yeah, you can then sort of figure out how much you're going to need based on what you need to draw. Um, it is really hard in those early days because the essentials in the van, you don't know how much they draw, like the LED lights, ours draw just under one amp per light, and uh, then there's control panels for the fridge, um, we've got fans that run in our fridge as well that just use a little bit, um, we've got a, a, a alarm system that draws a little bit just in standby mode, same with our um, diesel heater has a little bit of draw for standby mode so even when everything's off we're not using it all we still pull about one and a half amps uh, per hour every hour um, so thankfully that's very easy to recover one and a half amps uh, so now we'll go into sort of real life situations of how we can use our batteries what we can what we can't do and things like that so again we will use our system for example, we've got quite a basic system really. We've got 210 amp hours of lithium battery capacity. We've got 300 watts of fixed panels on the roof plus a 150 watt solar blanket, which isn't very efficient, but it does help chase that sun in the afternoon and in the morning um, and just give us a little bit of boost during the day. Um, if I was to add anything to our van, it would be another solar panel. Um, I think the batteries are fine because uh, unless you get a lot of um, cloudy days in a row you really sort of rely on the batteries overnight um, during the day you're getting your solar like for now right now it's 2 30 in the afternoon we're losing the sun a little bit behind some clouds uh, we are currently running the inverter starlink tv is on for liam at the moment uh, and then all the rest of the little bits and pieces that we've got running the solar blanket is out but it's not getting much sun so we are currently drawing six more amps uh, than what we are getting in solar wise. So at the moment we um, are 20.6 amp hours below our maximum uh, and time remaining if we were to run like this uh, with no more extra solar coming in just what we're getting right now it could run for another one day and five hours. So that sounds like a lot but then when you start running water pumps and 
charging phones and laptops and whatever, it can all add up very quickly and you could be pulling 10, 15 amps an hour um, and then your 200 amp hours of capacity can disappear very quickly. Okay, so now back to the inverter. So if you do want to run those 240 volt devices like your aircon or your microwave or sandwich press or any of those sort of things, you need an inverter. Uh, you can buy an inverter and get it wired to the whole van so that when you turn the inverter on, all the power points in your van become live. Uh, we didn't opt for that. It was a lot more money to get it installed that way than to just have it standalone. So ours is actually just standalone in the rear cupboard. Um, then I've just run a power board off that that our washing machine hangs off of, um, Starlink hangs off of, and then we've got two spare that we either plug in, like Little Heath's baby monitor, or I run an extension lead out to my laptop, or whatever we want to use it for, we can provide it off uh, that inverter just at the power board at the rear of the van. Uh, it can be a little bit annoying, say if I need to run, work off my laptop at the table, I just have to run an extension lead out on the floor, but it was it was a lot cheaper for us to go down that path, so uh, we've made it work and it, it's fine. Um, but if you have the option, it is really handy to just have it wired to the whole van. Um, but then you also need to consider that it uses a fair bit of power in itself uh, to do the conversion. So it's got its own standby power usage uh, and each brand's going to be different. Um, so you have to take that into consideration as well. So like Starlink, and the inverter running at the same time can pull like eight amps per hour for every hour that we're running. Um, there is conversions as well, so you can run selling of 12 volts, but we haven't got there yet. So anyway, what we we don't have a microwave, so typically what we use 240 volts for is just our washing machine and charging laptops uh, and the Starlink. We can't run our aircon. Uh, like I probably could if I ran a lead out and plugged it into the side of the van. Uh, but it would chew through our batteries very quickly. Unless we had full sun, we do not have enough battery and solar to run an aircon uh, for very long at all. We might only get like half an hour. So we typically, we just don't run our aircon, uh, which is fine in summer. We sort of just spend our time outside in the shade, open the van right up, uh, let the breeze in the best we can. There's been a few sleepless nights in the heat, but otherwise this, we've managed pretty well. What we did struggle with is um, the cold. So our aircon's a reverse heater, we couldn't run that uh, to warm the van. Uh, so we actually looked at a different option, so we went down the path of a diesel heater. So the diesel heater uses 12 volts for its control panel and to run the fan inside. Um, 12 volts to run the pump, but otherwise, oh, and the element on, on startup, but once it's ignited, all the 12 volts is doing is running the, the panel, the fan, and the bump, which is next to no draw, really. Uh, and then the diesel is doing all the hard work. So that's a much more energy efficient way for us to get heat in the van than to try and run our uh, rooftop aircon. Uh, so we don't really need to run our aircon, so that's why we're quite happy with the system that we want that we've got. If you wanted to run the aircon, you are probably going to need double what we've got. I would have at least 400 amp hours of batteries and maybe 600 watts or more of soul on the roof to be able to run an aircon comfortably uh, on those hot days. But I'm not an expert on that. Talk to someone that can do it. Um, that's just my understanding of it. So the other one we can talk about is fridges and cooking. So we opt to run gas with our van. So our fridge is actually running on gas when we are off grid. It's a three-way fridge. Gas when we're off grid, 12 volts when we're driving, uh, which is only really good for keeping it cool. It doesn't operate very efficiently on 12 volts and then 240 volts when we're connected to shore power. Uh, some people opt for a compressor fridge. They are more efficient, but they use a fair bit of power. So again, you're gonna want a bigger system than what we've got to run a compressor fridge because that is running off your caravan batteries when you're off grid. Um, so that's a constant draw off of your batteries when you're off grid, you would want some good solar coming in. Um, so for us, the gas worked better. Uh, also, I prefer cooking on gas. A lot of people love induction cooking, but again, now you're relying on that 12 volts or 240 volts or whatever to give you an induction cooktop. Uh, that's a lot of power draw, where gas, I don't know, I've always preferred cooking on gas, so that's more energy efficient for us. It just means we have to go refill gas bottles somewhat regularly. Uh, so it's up to you whether you want to go gasless, you're gonna to have to have a bigger electrical system. If you're happy to run gas, you can get away with a smaller system like ours. 
Okay, so connecting to shore power on the outside of your caravan, you'll have a socket like this somewhere. In there, you'll see the power socket. I don't know if you can tell from there, but the earth pin, so the bottom pin, is actually much bigger than the one you would typically have at home. That's because these are 15 amps. So a caravan, or most caravans, will have a 15 amp input, um, and caravan parks and the like have 15 amp outputs. Um, so easy, you just need a 15 amp extension lead, you can connect your van to shore power. If you are connected at home though, typically most people won't have a 15 amp circuit at home. Like I said, house, uh, house power points are only 10 amps, so the smaller earth pin, these will not fit. Um, a 10 amp plug will fit in a 15 amp socket. Uh, and from my understanding, there is nothing wrong with that, but some caravan parks will not allow you to do that. Um, but if you're trying to connect your caravan to your home PowerPoint 10 amp one, you're gonna need something like this. This is called an amp amphibium. Basically, it's just a 10, 10 amp circuit breaker built into a weatherproof case. So you can plug your 15 amp socket into there from your caravan lead and the other end is just the ten, typical 10 amp plug. So that can plug into your PowerPoint at home 15 amp can plug into this. It's weatherproof and has its own built-in uh, circuit breaker, like the one out here. Which I'm not going to open. Uh, anyway, so yeah, that's, that's what you need. You can get them from the likes of Bunnings or most caravan stores. BCF, I think, sells them as well. Um, they're everywhere. That's the much safer way to do it. Uh, some old school people will just uh, cut off the old 15 amp plug and put a 10 amp or file down the 15 amp one. Don't do that. Just go by the right gear. They're not that expensive and it's uh, a bit of a saving grace. You don't want that uh, insurance claim if anything was to go wrong. Uh, then I'll run you at the back while I'm here. So this is a blue Anderson plug that we use for connecting our solar blanket to. That means we don't have to have a regulator connected to our solar blanket. It is now using the van's regulator. So I can just connect that straight to the van. It goes through the battery management system and just acts as another solar blanket uh, for charging our batteries. So I'm gonna leave it there. Like I said, I just wanted to keep this short, sharp and sweep very basic. Uh, if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out. But like I said, if you wanna go into more depth, the Lifestyle Pioneers did do a fantastic off-grid series that did go into that in a lot of depth uh, and helped calculate how much certain devices would use over a certain amount of time. So yeah, definitely go check that out. Uh, but I hope this just gave you that basic idea of how off-grid power works in your caravan and what you might need. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you in the next episode.